Hello everyone, this video is intended to mark 40 years since Paramount Pictures released Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan. I particularly want to speak about a certain element in the Battle of the Matara Nebula, but first, a bit of background. In 2267, the USS Enterprise discovered the sleeper ship Botany Bay adrift in space. On board were a group of augments led by Khan Noonien Singh, who had escaped Earth in 1996 following the end of the Eugenics Wars. Following Khan's attempt to take over the Enterprise, which was initially aided by and then thwarted by Enterprise officer Marla McGivers, the augments agreed to settle on the planet Seti Alpha 5, with Marla accompanying Khan as his wife. Presumably, Kirk agreed to marry the couple as a farewell gift before they left. In 2285, the Starship Reliant arrived in the SETI Alpha system in a search for a completely lifeless planetoid on which to test the Genesis device, a piece of sophisticated equipment designed to create life from lifelessness. During the course of their investigation, Captain Clark Terrell and Commander Pavel Chekhov encountered Khan Noonien Singh and his augments, and discovered that City Alpha 5 had been devastated by the destruction of City Alpha 6 approximately six months after Khan and his people arrived on the planet. Khan then used City Eels similar to those that had killed 20 of his people, including his beloved wife, to take control of Terrell and Chekhov, steal the Enterprise, and abandoning Reliance crew on City Alpha 5, head off to engage the Enterprise in battle as part of a plan to get revenge on Jim Kirk, who had now been promoted to Admiral. With both ships suffering damage, Kirk decided to seize the initiative by using the prefix code system to order Reliant to lower her shields so they could be vulnerable for another attack. This succeeded in driving off the other ship, allowing Enterprise to assess their damage. After both crews repair what damage they can, Khan eventually acquires the Genesis torpedo and prepares to ambush the Enterprise. Knowing that he's at a disadvantage in open space, Kirk decides to take the Enterprise into the Matara Nebula, hoping that Khan will follow. He does, and the resulting skirmish results in the Reliant losing the use of its torpedo launcher and port in a cell. But it's not all one-sided. The Enterprise has to have its warp drive taken offline due to a radiation leak. Given the heavy damage to the Reliant, and the fact that the Enterprise cannot use its warp drive to escape, Khan decides to take the only option he has left, to activate the 4 minute countdown on the Genesis torpedo. Now at this point in the novelization, Spock knows that decontamination would take at least another 6 minutes, and no human being would last long enough in the radiation flux even to begin the jury rigging necessary to bring main engines online. He also knew from studying the Marcus's data, the incredible velocity of the Genesis wave, and the speed his ship could go under damaged impulse engines. It was no match. Aware that Enterprise is currently unable to escape the impending Genesis wave, Spock decides his only option is to go down to main engineering and jury rig the warp drive. But is it the only option? What if there was a way to delay the detonators of Genesis using time dilation? Simply put, time dilation is the apparent slowing down of time caused by travelling closer and closer to the speed of light. A common example features two identical twins. One travels off into space, another stays on Earth. When the one who travelled into space returns, they seem to have only been away a few days. But the one who stayed on Earth appears to be day, weeks, months or even years older because of time dilation. According to the Star Trek Next Generation technical manual, this time dilation effect would result in two and a half days passing for a stationary observer for each day which passed for the crew at 92% of light speed. Primarily, Enterprise could use the prefix code trick from earlier in the movie to order Reliant to move away at high sublight speed. This would effectively make Reliant equivalent to the twin that went into space, while Enterprise would take the role of the twin that stayed on Earth. This would theoretically slow down the Genesis countdown from about 3 minutes to about 7.5 to 8 minutes, which should be enough time to complete the decontamination and jury rig the warp drive back into life. Well, what do you think? Let me know your thoughts and comments in the comment section. Feel free to like, share and subscribe if you haven't already done so, and I'll be back soon with another video.